Welcome to Elixir TV episode three, and uh, this is a very special episode for uh, for us and Elixir and, and me personally. Um, in the studio to my to my right, your left, uh, Dave Gutter, uh, Rustic Overtones, Paranoid Social Club, uh, rock star extraordinaire. Dave recently just uh, was a part of our main music hoodie with, uh, with Spose and Will Mallet. So we brought him in, we wanted to have him in here. I personally wanted to have him in here. Um, so, so welcome, Dave. Thanks. I feel like I should be smiling, like, you know, when they have the, the co-host. The co-host is always <laughs> smiling, you know, next to you. So the first, the first thing I want to say to you personally, um, before we get into the other stuff, is um, the first concert I ever went to when I was growing up. I, I remember I was coming down, was sophomore high school, and it was Orgy Disturbed. Jeremiah Freed, Six Gig, Rustic Overtones. And the only other song I had heard from Rustic was Check at that point. And um, I remember I immediately fell in love. I thought you guys were like bigger than life and you had this massive big sound. Did you ever think when you started Rustic Overtones that you would be here now with that big of a resume behind you um, when you started? Well, when I started, I actually thought it would be bigger <laughs> at this point. <laughs> um, you know, you, you, I dream really big, uh, but um, no, we've had, we've had an amazing journey. We've uh, had the opportunity to work with uh, some of my heroes in music, um, my heroes in, in the art world in general, and um, it's really cool that you and I spoke the other day about um, how being from Maine, there's not always like the huge acts that come through. And, and when we were younger, you know, there wasn't um, acts that came through it and played for like all ages. Yeah. So you didn't get to see bands all the time. Yeah. But uh, the local bands around here started a scene that was based around, you know, putting on concerts like you were a national touring band, but you're from here. Yeah. And giving people, you know, like yourself and, and, and me even, you know, shows that seemed like bigger than life. Um, but it was kind of just the scene in Maine. Like people would think that we were like huge superstars, you know. And, and Me personally, I, mean, I, I thought used to, that too, but yeah. you know, I, there was a day that I went to go get ice cream, and my ice cream was free because the girl behind the counter was like, was you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Go ahead and take it. Yeah. And I went to the movies, and the movies were free. Yeah. So the guy was just like, yeah, yeah, go, go. I love that song, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it was one day of this, with, and that's when I realized that I was, like, really, really fortunate to uh, have affected these particular people. Yeah. Because I love movies and I love ice cream. <laughs> um, no, but it's, um, people had this idea that a lot of the bands that were from Portland were much bigger than they were because yeah. the scene was so thriving. At that time, So yeah. it's, not, it's not a bad thing. Uh, it's a good thing, and and then since then, a lot of us have gone out and tried to, um, you know, blaze that path across the rest of the country, and uh, you know, get other people to know about the music. But um, the Portland music scene is like the, the greatest anywhere. Okay, so Rustic, Rustic's this this big thing. Um, I thoroughly enjoy it as well as I think everybody in Maine does, and a lot of people across the United States. Um, and then Paranoid happens. Now, do you, as a musician, do you still feel the same about Paranoid as you do with Rustic, or did you leave a little bit of yourself behind with Rustic and move into something different with well, Paranoid? Uh, well, before we were talking, and you were saying that I was the first person to bring a sense of humor to the, to the show. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where Paranoid comes in. It's, it's, um, it's music infused with kind of my sense of humor, kind of a tongue-in-cheek sarcasm, um, where Rustic is a little bit more uh, I'm not going to say intellectual because that would imply that I'm smart. Um, but rustic songs tend not to be about love. They tend to be a lot about um, hope and th that sort of thing. And um, Paranoid kind of makes light of heavy things and like, yeah. um, you know, love and addiction and all, anything like that. We just kind of uh, make light of it. Um, so that's kind of the, the comedic side of my songwriting. What's a what's a moment that you had when you were meeting? Because it, it's happened it's happened for me, and I'm sure it happened for a lot of people when they're coming up through whatever they're doing. Um, what was a moment that you had where you were you, you literally stepped outside yourself and you're like, I cannot believe I'm about to have a beer or do this or do this with this person? Is there ever a moment that you that you that sticks out in your mind, for instance? Um, yes. Um, 
Well, there's a lot. Um, um, once I was in uh, Texas, and I was on the road with Rustic, and I went to a party, and I was there with uh, Slick Rick and uh, <laughs> oh my Guru, God. Guru from Gangstar, who recently passed away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, I couldn't stop staring at Slick Rick's uh, his chains, his fur. He was wearing. Um, fur. Wait, you're, you're at a house party, and he was wearing his chains. Oh yeah. His fur. So that's he was that's not a fur. gimmick. That's how he is. Yeah. Okay. You ask for the, you know, the most extreme example, that's the most extreme example. Like, right. There are all the other examples were less outer body experience and more um, maybe enriching and honest. Um, <laughs> hanging out with Bowie, yeah. that was obviously um, a moment in my life that, um, you know, it's one of those things you could be like, oh, I can get hit by a bus today. And I hung up with you. <laughs> did you take anything from meeting like Bowie and, and, and Ray and people like that? Did you take anything from when you were hanging out with these guys, how they how they conducted themselves? And they may be in whatever making it is or, you know, people that have made it and you know, they're obviously in the public eye. Did you take anything from these guys that they were still down to earth and they were still Yeah, I did. That's whatever? like that's pretty much the most uh, profound influence that I've had is from meeting people that are my heroes that are really cool, yeah. you know, um, and then on the other side of it, meeting, you know, bands like, uh, you know, like Story of the Year, or like back in the day, like Seven Mary Three, and all these bands that were total dicks, yeah. um, and they were just like a flash of the pan, but they'd For be the really, time, yeah. they'd be really, you know, yeah. um, Eve Six, we played with them recently, those guys are super dicks. Um, <laughs> the Flaming Lips changed my life in the way that they interacted with us, not even as another band, but the way they interacted with fans, and it wasn't like we were in some sort of cool club because we were backstage. Yeah, uh, they were like that with everybody. You yeah, know? and um, since I've read articles about about how you know that's just kind of how they are. And yeah, I think Wayne Coyne had someone came to his house and said he was a super fan, and he like let him live there for a week or something. <laughs> She wrote, <laughs> bye bye, Alexu TV. You broke a string. We love you. <laughs> I think that's enough.